Hello everyone, welcome to Marwell Zoo on this beautiful sunny day in Hampshire. My name is Hilary, I'm the Public Engagement Manager here at Marwell. And today we are kicking off the countdown to our opening of our Lemur Loop, an amazing new walkthrough up near our giraffe house. It opens on the 7th of July. And this is the first of five videos where we're going to introduce the five incredible species that will be living in this amazing enclosure. And in this enclosure we'll be telling the story of uh, lemur evolution and uh, the amazing diversity among the different types of lemur species found in the world. But today we're going to focus on, I'd say probably one of the more famous uh, species of lemur, and that is our ring-tailed lemur. You may have seen them if you visited Marwell or lots of other zoos. They're quite common in zoos and wildlife parks. They're definitely one of the most recognizable of all lemur species with that amazing ring tail and the black and white features. And anyone who's seen the film Madagascar knows of King Julian, you'll know exactly what type of animal I'm talking about. Now these ring-tailed lemurs, as you can see by our two lads on the bottom here, are the most terrestrial of all the lemurs. That means they spend a lot of time on the ground, more so than lots of other lemur species. Um, but they can really move through the trees on ropes like this really, really quickly. Uh, so they're really incredible and well adapted to move both on land and up in the trees. Uh, and our lemurs here today are doing a lot of sunbathing. So that's something that ring-tailed lemurs certainly do a lot of among our other lemurs as well here at Marwell. And that's when they lean back, they open their arms wide, and they look like they're worshipping the sun. A pretty cool behavior, and it's all about soaking up the rays while you can and warming up. These lemurs also can be seen huddling. I see a couple of our lemurs just over there close together. They do this for comfort. They can all do the, also do this to warm up a bit as well. And ring-tailed lemurs like these ones are incredibly social creatures. So they do live in large groups. We call them troops, which I think is a pretty cool name for them. These can be up to 30 animals, so really big groups at times. And like all lemurs, uh, these guys are only found on the island of Madagascar, which is an incredibly special place. Uh, and specifically, ring-tailed lemurs like the ones you see here are found in the forests of the south, southern areas southwest of Madagascar. Now, ring-tailed lemurs, uh, like a few other animal species, like I said, live in groups. There is a hierarchy, but in the world of ring-tailed lemurs, the girls are in charge. So it's a female-dominated society. Uh, we have an all-male group here, so we're going to talk to one of our keepers here in a minute to tell us a little bit more about this particular group. Uh, and today with me we have Kat, who is one of our primate keepers. So she has the amazing job of looking after our lemurs, among lots of other animals here at the zoo as well. Uh, so how are you doing today, Kat? Good? Yeah, good, thank awesome. you. Awesome, it's a beautiful Enjoying day. Yeah. Uh, so can you tell us a bit more about our group of ring-tailed lemurs? Yeah, so, so we've got a group of um, boys, but five all together. Um, we've got um, Billy, who's down looking out the window. They're all behind you at the minute. Um, Alfie, who's also having a wander around the feet. So again, he's just there. Uh, the two sitting together, um, having a little bit in the shade, are Bill and Grant. And Ricky is now right next to you, coming to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Ricky. Coming to see what's going on. He wants to have a look at the iPad. Yeah, he does. So we've got all their names. How old is Ricky? Uh, so Ricky is nine, um, along with Grant. Uh, Alfie and Billy are both ten. And Phil is our eldest. He's 14. Cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, many people will have already uh, clued in that they are named after EastEnders characters. They is there are, a reason that yes. they're all called uh, these lovely, lovely names? Um, Phil Mitchell, as his full name is, um, came with his name, um, and then um, the keepers at the time continued the theme. Um, yeah. So that's where the EastEnders name. <laughs> Very good. It's so, certainly yeah. memorable, isn't it? So it's yeah. Really cool. Yeah. Okay, so. You take care of the lemurs every day, amazing job. Mm -hmm. What do you feed them every day here at Marwell? Um, so every morning they get their breakfast, which is a pellet, um, which is a complete diet. It's also low iron, which is really important for these guys, because they can um, store excess iron from their food. Um, and then they also get um, vegetables, so particular favourites of theirs, um, they like romaine lettuce, um, and peas are quite a favourite at the minute, as well as beetroot and sweet corn. And then anything orange, so carrots, sweet potato, squash. Um, so yeah, that's it's quite a very diet. Yeah, yeah, quite a very diet. Yeah. And occasionally, when it's available, um, we give them bars as well. I quite like their bamboo and hazel when it's available. And how many feeds do they get a day? Uh, we try and give them around three feeds just to spread it out for them, um, so that they've always got some food for each for um, in between some baby. <laughs> Excellent. Now. I did mention earlier that um, when it comes to ring-tailed lemurs, the females are generally in charge, but this is an all-male group, so is there a hierarchy here? Do we have a male that rules the group? Yeah, um, generally Phil is pretty in charge. I think it's because he's the bigger bigger boy. Um, he's quite bulky as well. Um, and then 
the lowest is probably Billy at the minute. Um, he's quite a quiet individual. So, uh, yeah, definitely a hierarchy in the group. Excellent. And how long have you had the pleasure of working with these members? Um I've been working with these guys for about a year now, um, which has been brilliant. I've loved it. And um, I've been doing some training work with these boys um, since May last year. Um, kind of now in preparation for the move up to the walkthrough, which is going to mean that they go up in crates hopefully nice and Yeah, and how's the, how are the preparations going for that? Yeah, they all seem to go really well. I popped up there this morning. It's looking really, really good. Loads and loads of vegetation and planting. Um, we've got a nice big pool area that's going to have plantation in it. Um, there's rocks, it's all been landscaped really well and inside, um, again, also landscapes, so there's been planting inside. Um, so yeah, it's coming along really nicely. And with this enclosure, it's a different from the way the lemurs have been set up here at Marwell in that there are multiple different species together. So how has yeah. it been uh, mixing the animals and introducing them to each other? How is that going? Um, it's going pretty well. Um, we've shut them away um, for the minute, but these guys have now been mixed um, with our three black and white uh, rough lemur boys. Uh, we did that a couple of weeks ago. Um, and we made sure that it was quite a slow transition, make sure that there's a sort of a familiar territory for everybody being mixed. So because we were moving the black and whites into the ringtail territory, um, we um, gave black and whites the indoor area um, and then we did sort of slow introduction through the mesh so that they can sort of see each other, smell each other, but you know, in case they're not quite ready to mix, they can't mm. really injure each other. Um, and then when it all looks to be positive, um, we mix them together, we had to make sure that we have plenty of staff just in case we needed to intervene, but generally um, they're pretty good at communicating with each other. These guys were really agile, so they were able to get out of the way of the bigger black and whites. Um, and obviously the black and whites, their size made them, you know, <laughs> safe and fine amongst the mix. Um, and it all went really well, and they did a lot of sense communication, so they, they just did it all for themselves, and we just stood back and made sure it was okay. Mm. And um, yeah, they've got their separate areas that they tend to hang out, but they will mingle from time to time, so yeah, it's, it's going really well. Brilliant. You'll all be ready to move in on the 7th of July then, I expect. Yeah, hopefully. Awesome. <laughs> well, we've got com some comments on Facebook here, just lots of cutes, lots of people <laughs> saying they're very cute, aren't they adorable? They are uh, such amazing animals to watch. Um, so, what is your favourite thing about working with them? Um, I just love that they're all so different and unique. Um, obviously, they're unique species to Madagascar alone. That's the only place you find it in Lima. Um, and we've got five species here at Marwell, and they're all different. Um, you know, you go from these guys that are a bit smaller, spend their time on the floor, and then you've got things like um, the crowns, where they're really at home, going, you know, in the air. Um, from coast to coast, and um, being really agile, um, then our rough lemurs are bigger, and yeah, they're just all really different. Yeah, it's brilliant, and yeah, again, that's what our lemur loop enclosure is going to celebrate, is the diversity of lemurs, and that's one reason why we're putting a diverse group of lemurs in there, so you can really see the similarities, but also see how different these animals are, which is incredible, because all lemurs that are found in the world today have actually descended from one single species, so it's quite an interesting story, so I hope that everyone will be able to make it after the 7th of July and see the Lunar Loop for themselves. Um, so I have to ask Kat, um, have you always wanted to work with animals? Have, you know, a lot of people say you have a dream job, so yeah. is this something you always knew you wanted to do? Yeah, definitely, always a dream job for me. Um, I uh, did a course at Sparshell in animal management, mm -hmm. um, and then from there, whilst doing that, I did a lot of, a lot of blood, sweat and tears to kind of be a zookeeper or work with animals in general, because obviously it can be quite a popular mm. um, job, um, dream job. And um, yeah, so I did a lot of voluntary work, a lot of work experience, um, and then I was lucky enough to get a job here, and that was nearly four years ago. Really? And um, yeah, these guys are just brilliant to work with, so it's very rewarding. Yeah, so what is the best thing about being a keeper? Aside from the obvious, hanging out with animals all yeah, day. Yeah, obviously, <laughs> hanging out with animals. Um, I think it's um, the actual knowing that you're working with some really endangered species and you're helping to take care of them and safeguard them um, for the future. Um, obviously there's always threats to all of pretty much species we have here and in other zoos, so to know that you're actually trying to help um, conserve them and we're, we're just safeguarding them. Really. Um, so it's a really quite nice but important role that we play and I think that's the best thing because we hopefully are making a difference. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And 
We've got a question from Christine asking which lemur species are going into the new enclosure. So you can tell us a bit more about those four um, We've got species. the three black and white rough boys um, that are going in. Um, obviously they've already mixed with the ringtail, so mm -hmm. these five will be going up. And then we've got the two crown lemurs um, who are just down at the bottom of the complex. Um, they will be moving in on the 7th. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it should be going really well. Excellent. And roughly, um, I've read about a lemur um, longevity, so how old they live in, in the wild, but what about captive ringtail lemurs? Oh, how long do they live? Ring -tail lemurs got Shelley asking live, that. Yeah, they can live um, around 20, um, maybe 25 at a push. Um, so yeah, obviously we can give them a lot of veterinary care. They've got a steady diet coming in. Um, so yeah, they can do pretty well in captivity. Excellent. Now, I can't talk about ringtail lemurs without talking about stink fight, because this is definitely <laughs> something they're quite famous for. Uh, so male ringtail lemurs will use scent glands on their wrists and they'll rub them on trees and other areas to mark their territory, but they also rub them on their tails to try um, and s essentially get the scent onto their tail. And then when the males are wanting to fight over the girls, they'll do something called stink fighting where they wash their tail at each other. Uh, have you seen our males do that here? There are no females in the enclosure, but um, have they done yeah, that for other reasons? Yeah, they have actually. Um, when we were mixing them with black and whites, um, they were doing a lot of stink fighting, um, <laughs> really wafting their tails, their little ears were fat, um, and uh, yeah, they were making sure that their scent was getting everywhere so that the black and whites knew this is this is us yeah um we're together as a group of five and we've kind of come into our bit and we've got to make sure that we all know where we stand so yeah there's a lot of stink fighting that day which is really interesting to see because generally we don't want to see it because obviously they're quite a settled group yeah um so they've come to stand next to you yes. in here uh, they seem obviously we've already talked about that ring tail lemurs are quite social creatures but it looks like they're just happy or seem to be rather content, rather, uh, just sitting kind of close to us, wondering what's going on. There may also be the promise of food, if you think that's what they're around yeah, about. Yeah, and I, I trained them just before, um, so they might be hoping that there might be a bit more of a reward um, and another session happening, but uh, not yet. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, so when do they get fed again today? Uh, Jake um, will be feeding them probably um, just after his lunch, so about <laughs> 2 o'clock today they'll be getting their next feed. Um, it's not been long since they have their first food, and then they get one slightly later in the afternoon. Cool. And out of all the things that we give them here, um, Sean's asking on Facebook here, what is the thing that they go for first? What's the one bit of food that they seem to enjoy the most? Oh, at the minute, it's a tie, I think, between um, carrot and beetroot. So oh, beetroot. Very, uh, yeah. very healthy, gentlemen. Very healthy. Excellent. Um, so we've got a, another question from Christine here. Is the public allowed to walk through the new enclosure? And absolutely. So it is a walkthrough, uh, which is exciting. You'll be in the same enclosure as the lemurs, as well as a green peafowl, who we'll talk about in a later video. I was joining the lemurs, which should be very exciting. So it really is an immersive experience, and we're really looking forward to it opening. Um, and it looks like the lemurs here have uh, kind of chilled out a little bit mm -hmm. and are... One of them's found a bit of food left over from breakfast, I think, but yeah. I think we'll probably wrap it up here inside the lemur enclosure. So thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thanks for all of your comments and questions. It's uh, great to see that there's some interest around our lemur loop enclosure. We're really looking forward to it opening again on the 7th of July, and we'll be back here next Wednesday with the next video highlighting uh, another one of our species, and most likely another lemur. I think we're going to keep the green pea fall for the end. That'll be the finale, so we'll <laughs> see how that goes. Uh, but thanks so much for joining us again. We'll see you at Marwell here again soon.